So now we're back and we're on step three of the four-step process. And this, this, this step is focused on discovering those top 10 people in your second degree network. Remember, the deliverable we're ultimately coming at, for, uh, coming at this for is who are the top 10 people in your network that are most likely to help you be able to get a job. And by the way, it's not just get a job, right? I mean, this process can be used for a number of purposes. For the lawyer at a law firm, it could be the top 10 people most likely to help you find clients. Uh, or it could be the top 10 people that could be most helpful for you in developing a mentor relationship. But anyway, more about that. Let's go to the next slide. So Lydia's search, remember in, the, before, in section two, we were talking about the power of having things in common with other people in terms of your ability to have an underlying basis for a relationship with them. So that's really what we're doing here, but we're trying to use data to solve that problem. So for Lydia, we came up with a number of different searches. Um, we did about, I think we did five of them. And what we did is we went on to LinkedIn and we went into the search function on LinkedIn and towards the end of this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that because it's a little confusing. But we went into the search function, we narrowed it to her second degree connections, we narrowed it to her locations in the Bay Area, Boston and New York. Boston because that's where she's from and New York because that's the center of the universe for big law. And industries, we, we selected legal practices and legal services. And then we looked at people who were at her, the schools that she was at, Fordham and where she is now, Hastings. And she also <laughs> included in this Gunderson, which is a great law firm in San Francisco uh, with offices in other cities as well. It's, it's one of the preeminent tech law firms and it's where Lydia is a summer associate as we're recording this right now, I believe. So she said, why not include that? Because that might, that would be interesting to see other people who shared that experience that she shared in terms of a relationship with that firm. Next slide. So now Lydia's top 10, who did we come up with? And this shows you who we came up with and what search results we did. So the very first person we came up with when we ran this search is Kristen, and Kristen is the general counsel of Lyft, and somebody I know through Tech GC, which is a very powerful in-house tech group that we were both part of when I was a GC uh, fairly recently. And then next, number two, Anthony McCusker, another top uh, tech lawyer in Silicon Valley who's a partner at Goodwin Proctor. And this was the search. Again, we talked about it, the search we ran, which was the search we ran before with these variables. Let's go to the next slide. Here, a different search. Second degree connection based at same location, but um, only UC Hastings and only Gunderson. And then this search she ran, but where the past company was Google. Next search. And you can see, I'm not gonna go through all of these, but in this one, she limited to her high school or to a high school, prep school, next search. So now we've done those searches. And again, at the very end of this, I'm gonna walk you through and do a couple searches using my LinkedIn profile to show you how to do it. But now we're in step four. And what is step four? It's what Anna Brooke had asked me about uh, fairly recently, which was, gee, what do you do after you find these people on LinkedIn? How do you develop a relationship with them? And this is the area where I found most lawyers struggle with. You know, um, I, I've given this talk to hundreds and hundreds of lawyers at big law firms over the last 10 years. And I've also met privately with, the, with partners at law firms and associates at law firms. And it's, it's so interesting because law is a career that you would think people would be natural networkers at. But the reality is most of, most of the lawyers in at least big law firms are not natural networkers, but they can learn these skills. And this is really important, but they struggle with how to implement them. This is what we need to do. So determine the best way to reach out through the mutual first degree connection or directly. What do I mean by that? Well, there are two ways to reach out to people once you have your list of top 10 people. 
The first way is you could just connect to them directly. You could, you could send an in-mail and say, uh, uh, I'll use somebody, uh, I'll pick a guy named James, who I actually know went to the same law school I did and the same uh, college I did. His name is Jim Nelson. I could say, Jim, uh, assuming I didn't know Jim. Jim, I see that you went to WashU and you went to Tulane Law School and you're a partner at Venable and I'm really interested in, in um, your firm and what you do in your practice area of tech transactions. Would you have a cup of coffee with me? I know Jim and I'm certain he would take anyone up on that. Jim, don't be mad if you get a million connections through this or a million in-mails. But I know that if he had people from WashU and Tulane reach out to him, he would have a talk with them or have coffee with them if he, could, if he could make time to do so. So that's the first way and that's the direct way. But another way which is just as powerful, probably more powerful, is to reach out through the first degree connection. And what that means is, remember, if I didn't know Jim already and I ran this search, there's someone in between me and Jim. And that's my first degree connection, who's also Jim's first degree connection. And I could actually reach out to that person and say, Sally, you, I know you know Jim. I can see on LinkedIn we're connected to him by one degree. Would you be willing to connect me to Jim? That is the most powerful way to connect to somebody when you have someone who knows you and the other person well, uh, and you can do that. And then finally, um, you want to follow up online. And um, to follow up online could be after that introduction was made, let's say Sally's then sent an, in, an email uh, or could make the introduction through LinkedIn, through the messaging service through LinkedIn and say, hey, Doug and Jim, you guys should meet. Uh, you're both in the same area and I know you, you're both good friends. Um, and then it would be on me to take the next step and say, Jim, let's grab a drink or let's grab coffee. So now I'm gonna have Anna Brooke, since we finished the presentation, hand me my computer, and I'm gonna do some of these searches for you so you can see how to do it yourself at home. So the first thing I'm gonna do is exit out of this presentation, and I'm gonna quickly come to uh, LinkedIn, and now you can see LinkedIn uh, from the beginning. And you might be, I'm now on my main homepage for LinkedIn. This is my feed. This is me over here. And you might be saying, well, Doug, I don't understand. How do I get into the search mechanism for LinkedIn? Where is it? How do I change the variables in order to limit the search to do a search the way Lydia did it? And I'm going to show you. You put, because it's not totally intuitive. <laughs> So you put the cursor in the search box and then you press and that brings up the search function where it says search for people or search for jobs or search for content. And I'm going to do a search for people and I'm also going to do a search for jobs. So for people, I click that and then that brings me to this screen and now I'm going to say all filters. And now I'm going to do my own search. So I'm going to first limit it to the second degree. And I'm gonna do, since it's me, I'm gonna say the location. I, I, I'm gonna say, you know what, I, I'm, I'm, let's pretend that I'm a, I wish this was the, was the case, Anna Brooke, because it was a very long time ago, but let's pretend I'm back at my 25 year old self in San Francisco. That was a time when I, when I was that age in San Francisco. So I'm gonna do a search of all the people who had my things in common. So I'm gonna do San Francisco. Then I'm going to go to industries and I'm going to do law practice. I also have, happen to know that there's another industry, another thing called legal services. And sometimes lawyers find themselves under both. And I don't want to, I, I'm, I don't want to just meet lawyers at law firms. I want to meet in-house lawyers who are maybe a GC of a tech company. So they might not identify as legal practice. They might identify as internet or computer software or venture capital. So I'm gonna select all those. And then I'm gonna to go to schools. And I'm gonna say, well, they have Stanford, they have Harvard. Where's Wash U? I mean, Harvard, isn't Harvard the Wash U of the Northeast? Oh, that's a joke. Uh, but um, for all my friends at Harvard, give me a break. So now I'm gonna go in and type Washington University in St. Louis. Um, there it is. 
And I'm also going to do Tulane Law School. Uh, there it is. Okay. So now, who are the top 10 people in my network that meet this criteria that I would want to reach out to? Let's see. So um, this, I come up with this list. And you know, immediately, one of the people I see that I might want to reach out to would be, uh, well, there are two people that interest me. One is uh, Nathan Kleiner, who's CEO at a company called Critical Path. Pass, I'm sorry, Critical Pass. And another is Barry Levin, who's, a, who's at Oric, which is actually my former law firm. So with Nathan, I would then look at his, his background, and I would say, so the way this search function is, it didn't pull up everyone with Tulane and Wash, and, uh, Wash U, but it, he did go to Wash U, uh, as I did, and we have some other things in common. So I could then reach out to him based on that by just sending him a message or connecting to him uh, in real time. And um, in fact, I'll do that now. I, I, I cl cl clicked connect. And now LinkedIn gives me the, pre the option to do as a note. And I'm going to connect as a, with a note. And I'm going to say, hi, Nathan. Um, great to see that you also went, went to Wash U. Would love what you are doing in SF and whether you would be interested in serving as a mentor for the new Wash U mentor group we are creating. And I can send that invitation just like that. So that illustrates how to do that. Um, one thing that you will find out, which Lydia found out, and I'm not being compensated by LinkedIn in any way for this talk, is that Lydia did have to pay for a premium membership on LinkedIn in order to access the true power of the search mechanism. So if you're trying that at home and you're not able to run those searches, you might have to upgrade to the next level. Uh, but that's, that's, um, that's an illustration of how those searches work. So, so we're almost at the end now. We just ran a people search. What if you ran a job search? Let's pretend that I'm searching for a job as a general counsel. Um, so let's say type general counsel. Um, OK, so general counsel. I'm going to narrow that search to San Francisco. And the reason I'm showing you this, you can see this pulls up all of these jobs here. Um, and the reason I wanted to show this is because of the power of the second degree and first degree connections. With LinkedIn's job search, unlike other job searches, I can see a couple things here. I can see that for the deputy general counsel at DocuSign, that there are five people who I know in common there. With, or, or who I know who are at that company. And I know two Wash U alum are there. So that means that I could click on here, see who went to Wash U then, and then send a message there and say, gee, I'm thinking about this job. Uh, we don't know each other, but we both went to Wash U. Could we grab some coffee? And you never know. I mean, you know, I found when I've been hiring people, uh, the power of having someone else who knows the candidate approach you is unbelievable. So that's just something else that lawyers who are looking at this and other people who are searching for a job can think about. So anyway, I encourage you, spend some time with the search function. Adopt this four-step process. Really spend time at the outset on the first step by identifying all of your networks getting all of the people that you know in classified into each network and connecting them or moving them on LinkedIn. If you're like most lawyers I know, you haven't done that. So do that. Uh, reach out to them. But before you reach out to them, do your searches. Come up with, with certain criteria and generate a list of the people who you think would be most beneficial for you, and then spend the time to cultivate a relationship with them online and offline.
I hope you've enjoyed this presentation. Anna Brooke, thank you for taking your time out on a Friday afternoon when you should be with your students to be with me, although we're hoping that this is also beneficial to your students.